In 2017, we landed our first commercial studio space in this building. The original Creative Club Chicago was a 900 square foot concrete box that we turned into our space of work and collaboration. It's where I started this YouTube channel. It's where I started my relationships with some of my closest friends. It's where I had my start as a creative entrepreneur. In four years, we outgrew the space with gear and ideas. In 2021, we caught wind that there was an available unit twice the size upstairs in the building, and we seized our opportunity, had them refinish the floors, knock down some walls, and add a kitchenette of our own. This new space became the clear next evolution of Creative Club Chicago. And with that evolution, Stephen moved halfway across the country to change our podcast into something that was living and breathing and actual real life thing. Now the studio isn't exactly what we want it to be even still, but after two years of refining, it's starting to really feel like a home for us. Now with Steven and Liz and Brax becoming co-owners of Creative Club Chicago now, it's pretty difficult for Steven, Gene and I to be setting up and tearing down every single day in our existing studio, making YouTube videos and doing Rally Caps, our podcast. So naturally we went back to our building's listing site on available units in the building. And the first day of searching, we found an available unit the size of the original Creative Club Chicago, just one floor above. Now, if you've been following my channel and our podcast for the past few months, this isn't new news to you that we've been building out this new studio, but I just wanted to share how emotionally fulfilling this whole process has been the past few months. The studio hasn't been named, so we've just been calling it 602 for now. 602 has five loosely defined phases of its maturity. Phase one, painting and sealing the floor and moving all YouTube related gear from Creative Club upstairs. Phase two, create a full blown set for rally caps with walls and sound panels to hang from the ceiling. Phase three, paint and furnish the window section of the space. Phase four, build a pegboard gear slash tool wall. And phase five, light the large 20 plus foot cavern with a top down light. So out of all those phases, phase one is complete and this video is really going to focus on phase two. Before we even started building out the rally cap set and the walls, Aperture actually sent us some lighting gifts. We got a spot light adapter, which you might have seen in some of my videos on the main channel or my running channel. We got these little pocket MCs in their carrying case. So we had four of them that charge within this case. Gene really liked them. Oh, let's go. Dude, <laughs> let's go. Dude, I've been so excited about this. Deity is an audio sister company to Aperture and they sent us some lav mics and a short shotgun mic for my new C70 rig. And on top of that, another 300X, which I already have, I love, now we have two. Thank you so much, Aperture and Deity. We are so stoked about these and using them in the future. Day one was the start of the build. We spent three hours at Home Depot, but like footage missing, because we were just so locked in for three hours straight getting everything we needed. And once we finally got back to the studio, we had a few hours to spare, and I busted out my new handsaw, put the blade on, and cut and framed out one nice. sound panel to Fantastic. see if it would actually work. So proud. <laughs> you did? We did it. Day two. This is our first big full day in the studio doing things. We built the rest of the sound panel frames and then realized that we weren't paying super close attention on uh, putting the outermost pieces on the outside or the inside and ended up with a couple of different shapes, which didn't really matter too much. It was really cool to do this first because it helped us avoid making that mistake on framing out the actual wall for the set, which is very similar in nature. So before we started framing out the actual walls, we wanted to measure, cut, and lay down the foundations of the walls. So we used this two by six piece of wood on the floor. And if you could see in the footage, uh, the floor is very uneven. So we needed to level it out by putting other two by four pieces and shims underneath it to get it perfectly level so that the wall was sitting on a level foundation and screwed into a level foundation. Otherwise we'd have leaning walls and that's no good. So after we decided how to structure that and how that plan was going to go about we started framing out the walls especially if we have supports on the bottom it's anchored into this it is also l bracketed to the wall like does it really need that much more i don't think so Seeing the wood panels in the studio actually made us realize we didn't want to paint them at all. We were going to use them as an artificial drywall essentially, um, being lighter and less uh, difficult to hang. And then we saw the actual natural wood and we're like, that actually looks incredible. Let's just make it natural wood. And a added bonus is that the, the patterns of the wood on that wood paneling matched. So it just gave a really cool visual effect. And you could tell we're total newbies here. Like you totally don't need to wood glue pieces to frame a wall. Like you just need to either like nail gun or screw them in. We just wanted to make ultra sure that everything was super secure in this entire process. So overkill was the name of the game. 
Day three, we started drilling the first foundation for the first wall. We ended up starting on the wall furthest away from the window so that we wouldn't lose the natural light coming into the space. Busted out the hammer drill to start drilling into the concrete. And the hammer drill was the right tool for the job. That is the tool. That is the tool you need. <laughs> I can't believe how easy that was. Wow. Our downstairs studio could hear every single thing we were doing up there and it was excruciating. <laughs> It does sound pretty wild. I was saying though, it, it sounds right. like, uh, you know, when you go to the dentist and they start like drilling your teeth. <laughs> yes. I was like, that's exactly yes, what it, it sounds really like. Does. Our friend on the third floor could actually hear us drilling. <laughs> We're on the sixth. Let's do insulation. Then we started to lay out the insulation inside the sound panels, realizing that the insulation was three and a half inches tall, whereas the frames were only three inches tall. So this insulation started to kind of puff out the top. And we realized if we were gonna spread fabric around the bottom of them, you would see the insulation in the top, which looked kind of gross. So we made the decision to still keep that insulation and then lay another piece of fabric on top of the frames to just close it off entirely as uh, a big white rectangle. Day four, we busted out the black paint, the same exact color as the floors, except an eggshell for walls instead of a semi-gloss. It went really quick. We just edged the sides with one coat and then rolled two coats on the entire wall. Went really quick, like an hour and a half, two hours and I was pleasantly surprised at how easy it was. And we made a decision to do this before we put the walls up. It just made it so much easier to get behind where the walls would be instead of having to so tape like off the walls and work slightly. around them. In the same time, we started hanging sound panels, which presented their own problems, but we finally were able to rig it out with these certain clamps. Once we hung as many sound panels as we could and the wall was painted, we started mounting the first wall, which was super exciting. We used C-stands to prop it up with sandbags. We just like wrapped a piece of cloth on the end of each C-stand arm to make sure that it just didn't fall in either direction while we didn't mount the entire thing in the way we wanted to. So overnight, it would just be secure. It was really exciting to see the work that we put into this wall and actually see it up in the air for the first time. Day five, Gene was finally back to be extra hands in the studio and we added a bottom brace to the first wall. So we anchored all of it to the anchor pieces that were drilled into the concrete floor. That same day, we framed out the second wall almost in the exact same way we framed out the first just much simpler this time, less screws, less wood glue, because we knew it didn't need as much. Day six, Shua, Chad, and Liz went to Home Depot to get more black paint, which we were going to use for the two by six foundational pieces so that they kind of blend into the floor. Um, you have, again, that uneven floor that it's sitting on, so that's really going to disguise the wall um, from being on sort of a slanted ground and sort of looking like it's sitting on a flush floor. They also got some more wire clamps so we could hang the last few sound panels. Day seven was super exciting because we finally got to see some of this be somewhat finished. We stabilized the two walls on top with two two by six 14 foot pieces of wood. Since the two concrete pillars on the side wall of this room are 14 feet apart, we slid that two by six right on top of the walls into that spot. It was a bit smaller than we needed, so we shoved a two, uh, two small pieces of wood to to just kind of jam it in the back there to stabilize it. And then I anchored that piece to the tops of the walls with screws. This really made the walls rock solid and we wanted to do the same exact thing for the front part. We cut down that two by six long piece and put it right on top of the front parts of the walls, making essentially a big rectangle. You can even put clamps up there with friction arms that brings things down to the set. It's just gonna be insanely versatile and functional. It's super nice to clean up the floors and just see the black paint on the floor with the black paint on the wall, bring over the rug and start to furnish the space. Uh, and then Shu and I just kind of had this moment where we sat down and we're like, wow, this is like this actually happened. Gave Chad a huge hug. Shout out to Chad. What a legend for jumping in and helping with this. He's been helping produce and edit the podcast the past two to three months. So I got to give credit where credit's due. He was so helpful in this project. And yeah, I hope it was interesting at the very least to see how this all went down with people who have literally no idea what they're doing. So why share all this information? It's super easy to have creative ideas and dreams. We're all made up of them. But what are your creative dreams if none of them are ever realized? 